Hello and welcome to New Hope Community Church. Glad you could join us this morning. And I'm going to start with the question. If God asked you for a glass of water, how would you respond? Would you say absolutely and quickly get him a, a huge pitcher of ice cold water? Or would you say, uh, it's over there. Feel free to get it yourself. Let me ask the same question, but instead of God, if it was a smelly homeless person or what if it was a rich uh, attractive person or what if it was someone of a of a different race or a different religion uh celebrity and what if it was a small child or uh, a foreigner would it make a difference how you responded there's a, a show that's on TV. It's been on for 11 seasons now. The description of the show is this, and I'm sure you'll be able to figure it out what it is. It, it is a two-time Emmy award-winning reality series that follows high-level executives as they slip anonymously into the rank and file of their own organizations. Each week, a different leader will sacrifice the comfort of their uh, corner office for an undercover mission to examine the inner workings of their operation. And it's the show Undercover Boss. It's been going, like I say, for 11 seasons. In fact, they did one show here in Cincinnati uh, for the city of Cincinnati. They had the mayor uh, go undercover. We're in a series called Creating Space. And this is a series within a series. We, we kind of hit pause as we were in uh, the uh, a series on First Timothy. Uh, First Timothy chapter four it has this line. It says, "Discipline yourself for the purpose of godliness." So we're hitting the pause button, asking the question: How is it that we discipline ourselves? What is it that we do? What does that mean to discipline ourselves? And so we talked about uh, journaling and how we can uh, capture the thoughts and, and the words that sometimes escape us. And if we can capture those, how they benefit us and can be tremendous assets for growth in our spiritual journey. Uh, last week, we talked about this concept, this idea of being still. Uh, we talked about how, how if we can meditate on the things of God and, and pause from the, the hurry and the, and the worry and the stress and the hustle and bustle of daily life, because too often we're too busy to recognize God, even if he were to show up in our lives. And so this discipline of being still, uh, I've already heard a lot of people liked the idea of taking a nap as an act of worshiping God. And hopefully some people have done that this past week, just for the sake of worshiping God. Uh, so this week I want to do something a little different. I want to scratch the surface. I want to dig a little bit deeper. I want to look beneath what is the obvious. So discipline so far, we've been... Um, mining our own depth, you know, through journaling and our own thoughts, our own emotions, through being still and, and sitting with God and, and and being present with God ourselves. It's been a very me and God idea, me and God disciplines that we've been working on. And, and I want to, uh, and as we do that, hopefully we're recognizing that we have a depth to us uh, that is far below and deeper than just the surface level of us. I want to extend that today. I want to extend that realization that that same sort of inspection and discovery process, we can use that on the world around us. So hopefully... Uh, we can admit, like I say, that uh, while we have this depth and diversity of thought within ourselves, and that it's rare that people fully understand us, truly understand us, that we recognize that everybody else around us is the same way. And so we should 
be taking time and effort into trying to fully understand their depths, at least see parts of that, to realize that in others, and even take it a step further. So today what I want to talk about is hospitality. It's not normally a discipline in the sense that we talk about disciplines of how to grow closer to God. But as I thought about this and prayed about it and meditate on this, I absolutely believe that this is intrinsic. It's absolutely necessary to, to, to learn how to practice this as a way of seeing God, as a way of being close to God. Now, when we say hospitality, there's the general idea of like a dinner party, you know, making sure that all the silverware matches and sending out nice printed invitations. Well, that's not really the hospitality that we're going to be talking about. Mm -hmm. it, it extends way beyond that, like way beyond that. You see, in the biblical culture, in the Middle East, even in today's world, showing hospitality is an absolutely fundamental, primary, paramount, it's, it's an imperative thing. It, it is chief about the culture, is one of the most important things. It, it, it is a predominant characteristic of what uh, they feel like it means to represent God well, is to show hospitality. Stories abound of people uh, in the Middle East who are in the desert and they come across a Bedouin camp. Of Bedouins are the people who live in the desert, they live in tents, very, very similar to what Abraham was doing in his day. And, and they come across these Bedouin camps and they're just welcomed in with loving arms like long lost friends. And these Bedouin families will, will, will break out the finest that they have at the drop of a hat, whether it's one visitor or 50 visitors that show up in their house and, and they will give the last morsels that they have of their food to strangers, knowing, knowing that it might mean that next week that they go hungry, but believing fully that treating a visitor was that important. Treating a visitor well is that important. And it's not so much about um, politeness or manners. It goes far deeper than that in, in the actual seeing other people as worthy. Seeing other people as valuable. Seeing past this human visage that we have and catching a glimpse of the image of God implanted upon every person. You see, Paul writes, be hospitable. Even Peter writes it in 1 Peter, be hospitable. And they're using the word phylozinos. Phylozinos, it's a compound word. It's made up of two words. The word, first word is, is phylos, and it means friend. And the second one is xenos, and it means stranger. Friend and stranger combined into one word, and, and we translate that as, as hospitality. Friend and stranger, our friend and foreigner. It's where xenos is where we get the word xenophobia, uh, a fear of, of foreigners, a fear of strangers. And see, what this word says is there is a friend that we encounter often that it just happens to be a stranger. It happens to be a foreigner but they're a friend. That's hospitality. Stories of Genesis 18 and 19, they, they really, I mean, they're put side by side for a very specific, important purpose to show this trait of hospitality and its significance. Genesis 18 is the story of Abraham. It says, now the Lord <clears throat> appeared to Abraham The uh, uh, Lord appeared to him by the oaks of Mamre. And while he was sitting uh, at the, the tent door in the heat of the day, when he lifted up his eyes and he looked, and behold, three men were standing opposite him. And when he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them. And he bowed himself to the earth and said, My Lord, if I now have found favor in your sight, please do not pass your servant by. 
please let a little water be brought and wash your feet. See, these are strangers that are, are walking past the tent of Abraham. And, and Abraham sees them and he runs to them. Now, now the one thing that I we didn't show here is that in the previous chapter, Abraham had just received the covenant of circumcision. So he had just been circumcised. He's laying in his tent, recovering from circumcision. He sees strangers walking by. He jumps up and he goes to welcome them in, running to them. Despite whatever pain that he's in at the moment, he runs to these strangers and then he washes their feet. He gives them shade to sit in out of the, the, the sun of the desert. And he gives them bread. And not just a little bit of bread. It says he gets three measures of flour to feed these three strangers. You know how much three measures of flour is? 65 pounds, roughly. 65 pounds of flour. That's like 22 pounds of bread each. And that's just a flour, not, my, not, not, not even including the other ingredients that go into making the bread. I mean, like, I go to Longhorn, you know, and they bring out that bread beforehand. It's kind of that appetizer thing. It's their act of welcoming you in, and, and I get that. And I can gorge myself on stuff like that bread, but... But 22 pounds? Imagine 22 pounds of that. And then he brings out the choice calf and slaughters it to feed them. And he gives them curds and milk. He treats them like royalty. And they're strangers. Abraham, remember, is the father of our faith. God chose Abraham. Because Abraham had the heart that would be the one that, that uh, God saw as the founding father of our faith. I believe his heart towards these strangers was a big indication of why God chose him. There's an ancient rabbinic teaching that actually takes this passage, this, this story in Genesis 18, and it breaks it down just a little bit differently. It says this, it says, Now the Lord appeared to him, to Abraham, by the oaks of Mamre, while he was sitting at the, door, uh, the tent door in the heat of the day. So that's one scene. Okay, God is sitting with Abraham. They're sitting in the tent, and God's sitting with Abraham, and, and they're kind of having this conversation. Then... Then, when he lifted up his eyes and he looked, behold, three men were standing opposite him. And when he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them and bowed himself to the earth. So as he's sitting with God, he sees these three and he jumps up and goes to meet those three and welcome those three. And then turning back to the Lord, he says, this is according to this ancient teaching, he says, my Lord, if now I have found favor in your sight, please do not pass your servant by. And then, turning to the strangers, he says, please let a little water be brought and wash your feet. So in other words, he's saying, while Abraham is sitting in the presence of God, he excuses himself to go and take care of these strangers who have come, to offer them hospitality, to welcome them in as royalty. And, and, and then he turns to God and says, God, please uh, give me a moment to, to deal with them, to, to welcome them in. This ancient teaching says that hospitality toward guests is greater than receiving the divine presence as when Abraham invited his guest, it is written, and he said, Lord, if now I have found favor in your sight, please uh, pass not from your servant. So in other words, please, God, don't leave while I take care of these strangers. Abraham requested that God, the divine presence that he was sitting with, wait for him while he tended to his guests appropriately. See, this story is emphasizing it's emphasizing the trait that Abraham, of Abraham, that is able to see the trace of God in a stranger. This story is emphasizing the trait of Abraham that is able to see the trace of God in a stranger. That's 
hospitality. Lord Rabbi Jonathan Sachs writes of this incident. He says, Abraham, father of monotheism, he knew the paradoxical truth that to live the life of faith is to see the trace of God in the face of the stranger. It's easy to receive the divine presence when God appears as God. What's difficult is to sense the divine presence when it comes disguised as three anonymous passers-by. That was Abraham's greatness. That was Abraham's greatness. He knew that serving God and serving or offering hospitality to strangers were not two things, but one. This is the discipline that I'm suggesting that we focus on. Seeing the divine presence in others and treating them with the utmost hospitality, treating every person as royalty, every person as worthy, every person as an image bearer of God. The Bible from cover to cover screams the importance of this. And we learn as the story unfolds that the strangers are actually angels. Abraham doesn't know this initially. But he showers them with hospitality, even though he doesn't know that. Only later does he find that out. And this led to a, a well-known verse that, that we've that we're familiar with in the Bible. It's Hebrews chapter 13, verse 2. It says, Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by this some have entertained angels without knowing it. Scripture also tells us that while we in our current state are a little lower than the angels, there will come a time, there will come a time when we will be elevated above them in duty and in role. Our ability and our willingness to show hospitality to strangers, to, to treat strangers, to treat one another with kindness and, and with compassion and with dignity, it's going to play a role in this change of our status in relation to the angels. When the angels approach Abraham in the story, it says that, he lifted up his eyes and he looked and behold, the three men were standing, it says opposite him in the NASB, but it is literally above him. Okay, this hints at after he has brought them, these lavished upon them, 65 pounds of bread. He's washed their feet. He's given them shade. He's given them drink. He's, he's, he's slaughtered the choice uh, uh, of his flocks. He brings them curds and milk and the calf. He prepared in verse 8, and he says he placed it before them, and then he was standing literally above them under the tree as they ate. Their status changed as a result of Abraham's hospitality. It is precisely Abraham's ability to recognize the worth of even strangers that elevates him in God's kingdom and for God's purposes. Now, just very quickly to show the importance of hospitality, Genesis 19, the very next chapter, right after the story of Abraham, his kindness to the strangers, it tells the story of these same strangers now going down into Sodom, and they were abused and ill-treated. Now, typically we envision uh, the sin of Sodom as being homosexuality, but the prophet Ezekiel explains that's not the case. Now, while it may have been the method of the sin, that wasn't the sin. Ezekiel explains it was their lack of hospitality that is the sin. It says in Ezekiel uh, chapter 16, verse 49, Behold, this was the guilt of your sister Sodom. This, he's going to explain it and lay it out in simple terms. This is the guilt of her and her daughters, and they had arrogance, they had abundant food, and they had careless ease, but she did not help 
the poor and the needy. When those strangers showed up in Sodom, they wanted to abuse them rather than take care of their needs. That was the sin of Sodom and Gomorrah. And these two stories are placed side by side to illustrate the importance of recognizing others, even strangers and foreigners, as people made in the image of God. And therefore, worthy of being treated well. In the first story, Abraham becomes the father of our faith. In the second, Sodom is destroyed. If someone asked you for a cup of water and you knew, and you knew it was an angel sent from God, how would you respond? We need to treat all people as a divine appointment as an opportunity to change our hearts, to embrace the God-imprinted image within every person. But let's not stop there. Because Jesus values hospitality. When Jesus took on human flesh and he walked among his creation, people treated him the same way that the angels were treated in Sodom, with hatred, with contempt, and with violence. In his teaching, Jesus says, the kingdom of heaven, it's like, well, it's like 65 pounds of flour. Jesus is recalling the generosity of Abraham to strangers when he's trying to paint a picture of what the kingdom of heaven looks like. And he's likening that to God's plan. Listen, when heaven and earth overlap and all people everywhere are, are in God's kingdom, recognizing God as king, walking in his mission and in, 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 the, in the footsteps of Jesus, then people will treat strangers like friends. Philozenos, a friend who just happens to be a stranger. This is a discipline that we need to practice. And Jesus carries it even further. You know what he says in, in Matthew 25. Listen, if, if you've fed the hungry, when you have clothed the naked, when you have visited a stranger, a xenos, he says, that was him. That's, that's him. And for those who didn't have a heart that recognized strangers as friends, for those who, who, who didn't give them a drink of water, who, who didn't clothe them, who, who turned their backs on those in need, those people received the same fate as Sodom, and they were banished. If Jesus himself asked you for a cup of water, what would you do? What would you do if Jesus asked? This is the discipline that we urgently, urgently need. And it's going to take discipline, just like the others. It's going to take work. We don't just decide today and we're good at it tomorrow. It's going to take effort and time to, to practice these things. It's going to take a change of heart, and that might take a little time as we put these things into practice, to look for the best in others, to look at others as friends, whether they're friends, whether they're strangers, or whether they're friends who happen to be strangers. Jesus has clearly, clearly 
unequivocally clearly told us that how we treat others is how we are treating him. Let's look beyond our initial glimpse of people. Let's, let's scratch the surface of what it is that we go through life on a daily basis, just seeing the surface level of things. Let's dig a little deeper. God is at work. God is at work. His divine presence is near. He's not playing undercover boss. He stated it with abundant clarity. It's me. It's me that you are encountering every single day of your life. And you do that through how you encounter other people. He says, that's how I come to you. I come to you not as your boss, but I come to you as your father dressed as a stranger. So show hospitality. Not politeness, but see other people as worthy, as valuable. Seeing past the human visage and, and catch a glimpse of the image of God that is planted and planted upon every human being. Hospitality. That, that was Abraham's greatness. He knew, he knew that serving God and offering hospitality to strangers were not two things, but they were one and the same. Let's pray. Father in heaven, Lord, we ask for forgiveness that we have not always welcomed others in a way that would be worthy of welcoming you. I pray that we would um, take this discipline seriously. And this one might be a little bit harder than the others because digging into ourselves, we don't have to share with the world around us uh, what it is that we find but this is how we interact with others. So Lord, give us the strength. Give us eyes to see others, to see your face in, in others. Lord, show us the beauty of what life is like when we begin to treat every person as carrying, carrying and bearing the image of you. Lord, I pray that the more that we do that, the more that ripple effect will happen and the more that people will then begin to look at others around them and see your image. And Lord, that we will then eventually be met by a stranger who sees the image of God in us. I thank you again and we ask for your strength, your clarity, your truth, your love in all things. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, we are uh, kind of jumped around today. That story we talked about today, these two stories that are side by side, that talk about hospitality, that's in Genesis 18 and 19. I encourage you to go read that. We're in a series within a series in 1 Timothy chapter 4, Discipline Yourselves for the Purpose of Godliness. We're talking about disciplines. If you've missed the first couple of weeks, I would encourage you to go back and not just listen, but actually put some of these things into practice, practice them, uh, put them into your life. They will they are an opportunity for each one of us to draw closer to God, to see God. And read your Bibles. That's primarily what we're going to be talking about next week. Uh, not just the reading of, the, of Scripture, but the digging in, the scratching below the surface. Uh, thanks so much. Um, stay safe, stay healthy, and hope to see you in person soon.